Hey there. In this short video tutorial, I will show you how to install Home Assistant on top of the latest version of Proxmox V, which is at the time of making this video is version 7.2. Interested? Keep on watching. But first, if you're new to the channel, my name is Laszlo Marcel, and this channel deals with home automation, home networking, and sometimes with related stuff like DIY electronics and even a little bit of 3D printing. Anyway, let's continue with today's topic. Unlike in case of other software where you download an ISO file that you have to mount up and install somehow, in case of Home Assistant, for a VM, you will just have to download a VM image. So let's do that. Open up your browser and then type in this address or copy it from the video description. This will take you a download page on the Home Assistant website where you can download various uh, images. What you need for Proxmox is this one, obviously. So you just download that file. The file is heavily compressed, so while you are downloading it, you can search for a tool to uncompress it. Now the file has the extension called XZ, and for that you can use a tool like 7-Zip to unpack it. If you don't have 7-Zip, it's free software, you can download it easily from this address. If you have it, just open it and use it to unpack this file. This will give you VM image that we will need to upload to Proxmox. To upload this file to your Proxmox node, you will need two things. First, you will need to make sure that the Proxmox node can be accessed via SSH, and also you will need a tool that can copy files over the SSH protocol. To do the first thing, you just go to your Proxmox node, go to your shell, and here you need to check and optionally alter your SSHD configuration. SSHD is basically the SSH server that makes you able to log in and to copy files to your Proxmox node. So to edit the configuration, you need to check out this file. And here you need to search for a line that is probably commented out and yeah, it is this one, permit root login. You need to uncomment this. I must warn you that this is pretty much a dangerous operation in the manner that, uh, well, this enables remote login via the root user to your Proxmox node. How we, however, we will enable this only temporarily for a few minutes while we upload the file. So don't forget to revert this change after you are done copying. So first of all, uncomment the line, then save it. Then restart your SSHD servers. To do that, type system control restart SSHD. If you type system control status SSHD, you will be able to make sure that the service has been restarted. Okay, now you will need that tool to connect it to your Proxmox node. In my case, the tool I, of my choice is WinSCP. It is also an open source tool that can be used for the exact purpose we need. This is the IP address of my Proxmox node. The user is root and the password is the same that you use on the Proxmox UI. Okay, here we go. Now, you just upload it to wherever you want, probably in your root user's home directory. Remember to upload the extracted file, not the compressed one. Again, if you're not running Windows, then you need to find another tool that matches your operating system to do this upload. Now that the file has been uploaded to Proxmox, we need to create a VM for it because, well, that's an image and in itself it won't do much. So the drill is the usual. 
you right click on your Proxmox node, then select create VM. Then here you just give a name to your VM. Optionally, you can click start at boot if you want to auto start it with your Proxbox node. Click next. Operating system. Do not use any media. Next system. You need to change this setting, the BIOS, to UEFI one. And because it's a UEFI BIOS, it will need a couple of hundreds of megabytes uh, on the storage to create a boot disk. You select your storage here. You can optionally add the QMU agent. This is just an optional component which provides better integration with uh, Proxmox. Or actually uh, with the underlying virtualization software. Okay, click next here, disk. This uh, by default tries to create disk for your uh, virtual machine. Since we will import our own image, we can just scrap it and go to the next step. CPU, I suggest using at least two cores. Otherwise, the settings are fine. So once again, you click next. Uh, it depends on your uh, Proxmox nodes. You uh, you might want to give more memory. Also depends on how many uh, add-ons you will plan to use for Home Assistant. With a basic installation, two gigabytes is just fine. I will just click next here. Network, unless you have something really specific like a custom bridge or whatever, you can leave it as it is. Click next. This is the confirmation screen. So click finish here. Okay, now the VM is there, but we still need to import that disk. For that, we will use a command like this one, QM import disk. This is the ID of your VM you have created for me it's 107. Then the pass where we have uploaded the file, you might remember that it was in the root home directory. This is the name of the file, local LVM. For me, this is the name of the storage where I use my uh, VM disks or where I store my VM disks. So this one, actually, if you're not sure which one to use here, then you can just go here and check which one has VM disks enabled. Okay, and then dash dash format, Q, whatever to. So this is what you need. Press enter, and this will take a couple of seconds to import. Okay, successfully imported. So we are just fine. At this point, we would be able to boot the VM. However, we still need to change a few settings. So you go to your VM, then uh, go to hardware. First, we get just rid of this CD-ROM drive. We don't have any. And then double click on, you can see the imported disk here. Double click on it. Click add. And now it is recognized as a hard disk. Cool. Next, you go to options and then boot order. You can untick this one and tick the new disk we have just created. So it will be used as a boot disk. Click OK. And now we are finished and ready to boot. Also, if you're not happy with the size of the disk we have imported because you think you will use more storage within the VM. This is the place where you can actually resize this. Actually, this was a question from one of my viewers in the previous version of the video. So just let's take a look. Click disk action, size. And you can add additional disk space here. So I'm adding another 32 gigs. Click resize disk. And now you can see the size has been duplicated, doubled. Okay, 
Now we start this VM. Go to console. And you run into this problem. So this is actually new for Proxmox 7. Here you just need to do the following. Type exit. And you enter this virtual BIOS. This is like a computer BIOS when you boot your machine. But again, this is for the VM. So here you go to the device manager and we need to disable secure boot. Once again, secure boot configuration, attempt secure boot, change this. So you don't have it, you don't have that X there. And then just exit and exit again and say continue. Once again, enter and the machine will reboot. And this time it should boot into the Home Assistant operating system. This will take a couple of seconds. That's some basic initialization, waits for the network and so on. And as soon as you have the Home Assistant uh, CLI, you can type the following command here, post space info, and you can see here that now it uses the bigger disk size we have just provided. Also, you can see the IP address here, which was allocated for this VM in case uh, you went with uh, DHCP like I did. And you can try that to see whether Home Assistant is indeed running. And voila, as you can see, this is uh, the onboarding screen, which means this is the fresh installation of Home Assistant running in our VM on Proxmox 7. That was easy, wasn't it? Now we have Home Assistant running on top of the newest version of Proxmox. And yeah, the time has come to conclude this video, but if you like the video and uh, want to see more and want to support the channel, please consider subscribing if you haven't subscribed yet, of course. Anyway, thanks for watching the video once again and hope to see you next week, next time with a new video. Bye.